Coach Matt Painter. Uh, we have microphones. Go ahead, Brian. Matt, just the turnovers and the offensive rebounding kind of kept it close, but what kind of got your team through those runs in the first and second half? Yeah, well, I don't know about the runs. Obviously, getting up 13 points, and then they're battling to get back, and you know they never got it to where they tied it or took the lead. I think the crowd really would have gotten into it at that time. I think that was the kind of the key of keeping it there and keeping it at two to three possessions. They got it to one possession, you know, a couple times. Um, but I, I thought they they played really hard. You know, I, I thought they were quicker to the basketball, the 50-50 balls, mm -hmm. the rebounds. And then they did a better job of taking care of the ball. And uh, we, we got to do a better job of just making good decisions and not having off the ball fouls, whether it's a post up or a screen or you know, whatever it might be. But um, you know, I thought Rutgers played you know really hard. They just had a pretty big hole to dig out of. Matt, you talked about uh, you want these guys taking shots even if they're not falling. Yeah. Lance had one of those games where coming off the heater, didn't hit a shot tonight, but he has five steals, ten boards, eight assists. Right. Uh, talk about, you know, he didn't get his head down. He did other things to help yeah. win the game. I, I thought he played a good floor game. I thought he did some really good things, you know, for our team. And, uh, you know, passed the ball well. You know, got ten rebounds, which is, you know, huge from a guard standpoint. And, um, you know, where we got out-rebounded, and a guy that doesn't get a lot of rebounds got 10 rebounds. So it kind of shows you, you know, how well that, you know, Rutgers did. But now Lance has been great for us. You know, he, he defends. He's a threat to shoot the ball. He can help against the press as a second ball handler. Uh, but getting, you know, getting those steals and getting those rebounds were huge in a game that we didn't win the possession battle. Just the shots Mason made there when they were on their run, just how important was that to you guys having a halftime lead that you yeah. ultimately held on to? Yeah, we ran something for him there, and they pressed, and we didn't get it to him clean, or we were trying to, you know, get you know get the ball to the hot hand. But, now he's really shot the ball well this year. And when he gets in a rhythm, you know, he's obviously making over 50% of his threes. And, um, but, no, Mason's been great. You know, we, we just got to keep using that balance of him at the four with Zach in there. I think that gives people a lot of problems. Matt, there were a couple of possessions on inbounds there where Griffiths got loose. Looked pretty similar. Was it just a miscommunication? One of them was. Yeah, one of them was. The other one, you know, we were right there and he made a tough shot. And, you know, and you, you look at the stat sheet and he's three for 11, it seemed like he was eight for eight. Like, you know, I mean, just because he gives him that punch off the bench. But, you know, he had a couple games um, non conference where he really got going. And that's what we talked to our guys about. Like, you know, you get to conference play and you get to where like it gets difficult for a young guy sometimes to grab minutes because he's good in that role as a scorer and but there's other things to the game right and uh it's hard as a freshman but you can see that you know he, he's got a he's got a bright future anybody that can that has size that can handle the ball and move and shoot you know, you, you know you're going to be a guy that you got to stick with and um i thought he did some really nice things Matt, you've had some epic battles with this Rutgers program. What do you think of this team? How are they different or similar to those teams you've gone up against in these recent yeah. years? Yeah, you know, well, they're, they they don't have the same experience. You know, obviously Hyatt and, and Cliff, you know, have some experience. They have some other guys. Uh, Mag, you know, those three guys are, you know, when you lose Caleb McConnell and McKay, those guys are so good defensively. You know, their ability to disrupt. Now these guys here, like, you know, you're learning a system on the fly when you deal with, you know, the grad transfers. And they're all good. I told our, our team, I just said, between Simpson, Williams, Fernandez, and Davis, I just said, you, you don't know which guy is going to be their best guard. And so I think that's a positive at times because now if a guy's not going, you bring that guy in off the bench, then he can get it going. But it's also you want to see where that consistency is. And it's hard because I always tell our players, like, you know, you're not going to be a consistent player with inconsistent minutes. So as a coach, you're just waiting for that consistency to, to get going. But no, Rutgers, um, obviously, we have a great deal of respect for Coach Peichel. And, you know, they're, they're tough. They've been great for the Big Ten. They're physical. They're hard-nosed. Um, it's just a tough challenge. You know what you're going to get. you got to, you know, you got to tighten your chin strap. And you got to get out there. But they've, you know, they've been better than us. You know, that's simple. We might be better in terms of winning games or, you know, facing – and being higher in, in the league or whatever, but head-to-head -head matchups, they've been better than us. And I told our guys, like, if you're not ready for that, and we still look at look at the rebounds, look at the turnovers, they were better than us in there. But, you know, we, we were better because we put ourselves in a you know good position in that first half. But we have a lot of respect for them.
going off of New Balance, there seems to be a real physical battle inside between Edie, Amori, Trey Coffin, and um, right. I. What do you see from that inside? Yeah, um, you know, you you know a lot more on the head-to-head -head battle once you watch tape. You know what I mean? Because you, you kind of see when things are away from you, it's not obviously number-wise they got the best of us there. Um, but I, I just didn't think we were physical enough in getting them out of there. When you're sitting there playing volleyball at the rim and you're tapping the basketball, that happened a handful of times. You know, you're, you're going to get in, you know in trouble at times. Zach kind of saves the day for us. You know, but just because of his elite size, and he's, he's able to get those rebounds. And um, but no, we, we were fortunate. Like obviously, Zach Eady's best player in the country. He, he, he uh, got 2,000 points tonight. So anybody that can get 2,000 points in college and get 1,000 rebounds is, you know, you know pretty impressive. But um, love Big Cliff. Big Cliff's been great, man. He's He defends, he rebounds, he plays hard. He's come a long way. He's come a long way. But he's about winning. And, um, that's you know, Zach has a lot of respect for him. More, more, more so on the rebound and um you know, you just talked about how dominant you guys could be with Zach Eady. Right. And even Cliff, um, understanding they have a rebound machine on that side. You know, um, how emphasize, how much emphasize is rebound coming into the game? Yeah. Knowing there's no game. You know, huge. If you look at their numbers, like, they're even up, right? And we're plus 11. So, like, you would think that we had an advantage. And that's all we talked about because in the past they haven't been. In the past they've been better than that. And so, but, like, I'm, I'm a big believer when you play somebody, you get their best. And like when you're ranked second in the country or, you know, you're in the top half of the Big Ten, you know, why shouldn't you get their best? But when you're dealing with 19 to 22 year olds, sometimes it's a little bit different. But we, we told them that. We said, hey, we, we got to be able to do these things here to separate. Just think if we're, we flip it and we have seven or eight more rebounds, like what does this game look like? But give them credit. They, they, they won the war there. But it's always a huge stat no matter who you're playing, but it's even more important when you play Rutgers. When you get into a game like this, how big of a deal is it to have a guard like Braden at the end who wants the ball and you know is able to take command and wants that you know part of it? Yeah, it's it's huge. You know, we, we got the one ten second call. We had one other turnover, um, but to have him and Lance, you know, want the ball. Fletch does a good job of taking the basketball out. Uh, Mason does a good job of just being available. You know, normally he's a little bit more mobile than other fours, but no, Braden's great. You know, Braden obviously had a good second half. And, and did some really nice things for us. But anytime you have a, a lead guard like that, that you know wants the basketball and can make decisions, it really helps you. Anything else?